Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we continued on working through Tartarus and we're currently on floor 11, about to face another mini boss. And how much SP do I have? I know it's not too much, but I want to see an exact number. Okay, 14 and 14. What kind of SP items do I have? 50 to 1 ally. I don't want to use that up yet. So how about this? We'll just go in and pray that we get through. I'm actually gonna... I was just about to teleport, but I'm gonna check something real quick. Okay. Gonna go ahead and pull out Angel here. And Junpei's gonna be kind of our healer, because our next uh, boss here is weak to wind. So Junpei, don't let us down. Yukari... I forget if you can miss uh, Persona attacks that aren't light and dark. Alrighty. All right. It's enemy territory up ahead. Are you ready for battle? Let's go. And if we fail, we'll immediately go back to our last save, which is like two minutes ago. Ready? Let's go. You're up against a difficult opponent, but if the intel is available, I can help you. I can suggest the most effective attack based on the enemy's weakness. But I can only assist like this when we know the enemy's weakness. I'm sorry, but until you can get more information, you'll be on your own. So yeah, this is just explaining the assist mechanic. If you press R1, Mitsuru will immediately guide you to whatever persona is, or whatever move is correct to use. But since we... Okay, we know that that's weak to fire. I'm gonna hit you with, since you're the big enemy, I'm gonna hit you with wind. And then Junpei, you have fire. So you can fight these guys. Now we can set up for an all out attack. This is only the second boss fight, so. It's going- it's not going to go too hard. Like, yeah, we're already down two enemies. We just have this guy, who have the weakness to wind. So since we were shifting during that battle, uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up is there's a certain game series that has a thing in it called shifting. I've played one of the games of that series on this channel before. I wanted to make a reference, but I couldn't yet because the shifting itself isn't brought up until a later game. Uh, so yeah, whenever I do eventually LP the game that has shifting in it all. Oh crap. I'll be sure to bring it up. How much damage does this do? Don't miss! Okay, how about this? Let's hope this hits. Okay, if this doesn't kill, we'll have Junpei heal Yuki. And if this does kill, then we don't even need to worry about it. Okay, there we go. Everyone's up to level 7. 777. Seven, seven. We can move on now, but the next floor doesn't look any different. You don't think it'll be the same old thing forever, do you? No, this isn't Persona 3 original. Uh, only one way to find out. Uh. Yeah, you're right. It's just, I want to at least feel like we're making progress. No point in overthinking things now. All we got to do is keep moving forward. After all, I've already made up my mind. Mm. Oh, look at you all fired up. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Um, nothing really. Any anyway, enough about me. We gotta keep going, right? Come on, let's get a move on. Every few floors, there's some kind of gatekeeper. And they're always stronger and nastier than the last. Well, seems like after we beat him once, it's adios forever. So we just gotta come out on top. Indeed. Thankfully, the bosses don't respawn because that would be annoying. Although we could just use the teleporter anyways to 
get to a higher floor. Poison arrow bow. Hey, hey that's a nice looking bow. I can use it, right? Let's go ahead and give it to Yukari. If you if you get a weapon that one of your party members can use, it just says like, hey, you want to give this to them? Okay, so the poison arrow bow does a good deal more damage to enemies, but the accuracy is a bit less. I don't feel like I'm going to be physical attacking with Yukari enough to the point where I'm worried about a tiny dip in accuracy like that. It's only 98 to 92. Watch, Yukari's just going to miss like every attack from now on, but... I think we should be okay. Anyways, I'm gonna go back and save, and then we'll continue our trek up Tartarus. I'm gonna go ahead and have two save files, uh, just so that if my computer crashes, I can go back to that first save file, um, and so I don't like accidentally save over progress and lose the footage for it. Uh, because my computer... Is that? There's a red shadow up ahead. Perhaps you can ambush it. Oh, I think we might get into another tutorial here. I'll talk about my computer in just a second. There you are. Wait, is that shadow up ahead a... Hmm. Well now, that shadow took off like a bandit, didn't it? Those ones are fairly rare. I suppose we can simply call them rare shadows. They could be tough to catch, but the potential rewards are worth the trouble. So yeah, sometimes you'll see a golden... Shadow, it seems that they've turned left up ahead. Why don't you try tracking it down? If you beat them, I think they give you like a ton of XP, so it's good to always go after them. But there's a good chance that it'll run away from you. I think this will be easy on us because it's a tutorial. Okay, Yukari, don't miss. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, Yuki. Yukari doesn't have a lot of SP. Okay, now you hit. This may be a good test of your skill. Can't stop now. Let's go. try out fire. That doesn't seem like it worked. Yuri's in bad shape. He needs to recover. How's Boofu? Oh, okay. Then that makes it up. Uh, uh, Persona attacks can absolutely miss. I think I'll be okay if I just rush. Rush is just having the characters repeatedly physical attack. So yeah, we got 323 XP, which is a lot. Brings Yuki up to level 8. We also get another a uh, worldly coin, which will sell for a lot. What kind of HP items do we have? Okay, how much is this? Okay, that's pretty good. I should be good on that for a little while. Once we start getting to higher levels, we won't need to worry about HP and SP as much. Anyways, I mentioned I was going to talk about my computer earlier. It's been crashing a lot more often, and the weirdest thing happened where, for some reason, not only does it crash, but also some games on Steam have started running poorly. Like, I opened up uh, Sonic Origins and played through that a bit. Uh, because I want to play that game on the channel eventually. And some of the textures are missing, which is super weird. I also did that for Sonic Frontiers when I uh, tried to play through that. And I don't know why that is. And also for some games it freezes. Like, I was playing through Persona 5 the other day, and whenever I tried to do something it would just lag. So, something weird's happening with, with my computer. It hasn't affected the creation of uh, episodes and stuff like that, so it should be fine. So yeah, I'll update you guys if my computer starts acting correctly again. Ooh, new Persona. Or if I have to get a new one or whatever. It won't be constant updates, but if anything like huge happens, then I'll be sure to let you guys know. I realized that I forgot to talk... I In a previous episode, I was going to mention... Oh, I'm detecting a stronger foe, foe on an upcoming floor. Another gatekeeper. It may be wise to conserve our strength. Have you made use of the escape order? Strategic retreat can mean the difference between life and death. You can always regroup and try again. So yeah, you can always try running away if you want. One thing that I forgot to bring up in a previous episode is that is how the stamina mechanic affects um, bathrooms and 
sleeping in class because those are two mechanics that that I was like, oh, I'll bring those up later. Yeah, hopefully you'll remember when I talked about the stamina mechanic how that was annoying. How you just uh, they would just get tired after a while. The tired status would carry over into uh, normal day-to-day -day life. So, for example, you couldn't study at night if you were tired because it would just fail and you would be like, you couldn't focus and you wouldn't get anything towards your academic stat. It also meant that the nights after you finish up your Tartarus run, your teammates won't be able to go to Tartarus for the next couple of days because they're completely exhausted and they're still trying to recuperate from that. And the thing about bathrooms is that if you weren't exhausted, if you were just like normal, you could use the bathroom and it would up your condition to great, which meant that you could uh, last for longer in Tartarus. I thought I saw a shadow, but it's just June Are you saying I look like one? See, I'm just kind of rushing past shadows right now because I'm low on HP, low on SP. Also, if a shadow is chasing after you and you see a chest, you can try opening it because more than likely it'll despawn the shadow. One thing that I do like to do is if you get close enough to the stairs, you'll unlock the teleport for it. So if you want to speed things up, you can just get a, get pretty close to the stairs and then press L1 and teleport. It saves a bit of time and if you're getting chased by a shadow, it'll it might help out. So, she meant she mentioned the clocks there. You can restore your HP and SP for your entire team, but they take up 7 twilight fragments, which is a heck of a lot, especially for how early we are in the game. Let's see how many we have right now. I have 13, so I would only be able to use it once. I'm considering it. You know, first thing I'm gonna do... You know what, Th this, this episode we're gonna get into some Velvet Room stuff, so... Let me save first, we'll go do some Velvet Room stuff, and then I'll decide later if I want to use up the Twilight Fragments. Welcome to the Velvet Room. I have been anticipating your arrival. The time has come for you to wield your power. My role is to create new personas. By merging multiple persona cards together, they can be reborn into a new form. One could call it a fusion of personas. There is much hidden potential within your persona abilities. We've never had a guest show this much promise in the past. Indeed. And by establishing social links, you may be able to create even stronger personas as well. Oh, ho. this shall prove to be most interesting. To that end, as you accumulate cards, please bring them to me. If you wish to learn more about fusing personas in greater detail, then come talk to me so that I may give you some hints. I will assist you to the best of my ability. Alright, so this gets into Persona Fusions, and... Welcome to the Velvet Room. How, many, how may I help you today? Fusing is something that's a big part of the Mega Ten franchise. Basically, first of all, you want to register your Personas here. Which just means you'll save them for later, and if you open up the compendium, you can buy them back. So after you fuse them, you get rid of them, and you can buy them back later. Uh, fusion is pretty simple. Uh, you could do the normal spread where you just choose two uh, personas here and see what it makes. But what I prefer to do is look through the fusion search and see what the highest level personas I can make at the time are. Let me look through this real quick. Okay, so our next boss is weak to electricity, so we're gonna need the Zeo skill from the pixie. So we just need to make sure to not fuse that. Let's make Fornius, because... 
Uh, that gets rid of Orpheus. Well, we've already saved him to our compendium, so... What do you wish to inherit? Ah, uh, but do we want to get Aggie or Dia? Do we have any other... We have... Pixie has... Yeah, Pixie has Dia, so we can get rid of Dia. And go for Augie. Powers have been bestowed upon you. The thing that he said right there, no new powers have been bestowed, bestowed upon you, is something that'll make a bit more sense when we get to social links. Anyways, here's what fusions look like. I am Fornius. Allow me to show you a secret chant that will grant you all of my power. And I'm pretty sure that'll automatically- the persona that you fuse will automatically get sent to your compendium, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, also, be sure to note that you can only get, um... You can only fuse personas that are the same level or lower as you. So in the top left corner, you see that we're currently level 8. So we can't get Archangel or Inugami, but we could get Silky, Nekamata, or Arimitama. Uh, the card with the exclamation point you see right there, that is... That means that they are unregistered. Which means they're not in the compendium right now, so that's how you know that it's a new persona. Aramitama, we know that we have. Or at least we had. So yeah, we're good for now. Let's talk to Elizabeth. So she basically has a guide for pretty much anything you could ever ask about the Velvet Room. The basics, what social links do to fusions. Dyad fusion is normal fusion, and then we have special fusions, which you get by combining three or more. And basically, just anything you don't know about the Velvet Room, ask Elizabeth, she'll tell you directly. And you won't have to worry about that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I actually am going to use the Twilight Fragments, because I want to go ahead and train up Pixie. I should have been doing that before, so apologies on that front. I'm gonna get her, her to a high level, uh, or at least a high enough level to where we can use Zeo, and then we could take on the boss. So here's what it looks like. Activate the clock. Everyone's HP and SP have been re HP and SP have been restored, and if I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I could have gone a bit further without the healing. Then I'll just uh, go back to my save. Anyways, let's use the teleporter. I'll go back to 11, and then once I get Pixie to Zeo, Pixie to level 4 rather, then I'll be able to take on the next boss. We're actually not too far away from the border floor at this point, so thankfully we should be able to get Tartarus done in this episode. From here on out, I decree that I'm going to get, whenever I have to go through Tartarus, I'll try my best to do it in one episode. So, I might, like, spend an hour in Tartarus or something like that and cut it down to, like, a 20 to 30 minute video. You ever have something in a game that's, like, not necessarily scary, but it's like, you didn't really expect it in a game? So you're just like, oh, huh, they really did that. Like, not traumatizing, but just kind of like, oh, that's more than I expected. In Persona 3 Portable, there's a guy who- there's the guy who gets turned into goop in that one cutscene. And he has a sprite where he's like, turning it- you can see him turning into goop, whereas in all the other versions, he, it's like, off-screen. So I was like, kind of shocked when I first saw it, I was like, oh, god. Oh, look at how much damage that did, that was awesome. Nice. I'm hoping to explain something here, because there's something that I forgot to bring up. Yes, Shuffle Time! Okay. Shuffle Time I wanted to bring up because in the original versions of Persona 3, from Persona 3 to Persona 3 Portable, 
well. Uh, Shuffle Time was much more different. This version of Shuffle Time and Reload is closer to what it was in Persona 4 Golden, but in the three versions of per in the three original versions of Persona 3, as well as the original version of Persona 4, Shuffle Time was more of like a cup and ball game where you see all of the cards face up and then they get flipped over and you have to follow them and as the game prog as you get further into the game like progress more more and more and more into the story the cards get faster and they start doing crazy stuff like throwing them off screen and you have to see what order they went off screen they went off screen in and just follow all that and it's super cool or sometimes they would be like moving around the screen and you'd have to stop it just when the one card you want is uh, close to the screen. Man, I don't know why, but it's a lot harder to speak up when it's this quiet. I know what you mean, Junpei. Uh, I get super anxious in a lot of social situations, and so I'm very bad at starting conversations, but I'm usually okay at carrying a uh, carrying a conversation, like continuing a conversation. Oh, I wasn't able to show it off, but Yukari inflicted that enemy with poison, one of the many status ailments in this game. You could probably guess what it does. It slowly starts chipping away at the life of the enemy. So as I mentioned in a previous video, this game is a this game series is a spin-off of the Mi the Megami Tensei franchise. That's super interesting because Persona 3, the original Persona 3, in the West only, was called Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3. And Shin Megami Tensei is like, sort of the mainline of the Megami Tensei franchise, whereas stuff like Persona is just spin-offs. But in the West, the entire franchise, when it was localized, was just referred to as Shin Megami Tensei. Because in the West, we never got the Megami Tensei novels or the duology in the West here. So they called the they called Persona 3 and Persona 4 Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3 and Persona 4 because they wanted to sort of connect it to a popular game that they had localized Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. So in the West here, they've been it's been kind of referred to as the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, rather than just the Megami Tensei franchise as it uh, more accurately is. So the mascot of the Megami Tensei franchise is Jack Frost, who we've we saw in that uh, in that crane game that Junpei was losing at in Polonia Mall. And what's kind of funny is that. The first ever Megami Tensei game that was localized in the West is a Virtual Boy game called Jack Bros, which was like an action-adventure game starring Jack Frost and a different uh, related character. I think it was like Jack O' Lantern or something like that. So as I've talked about numerous points at numerous points in the past, I'm not the best at acting or voice acting or anything like that. I only do it because, you know, I kind of want these uh this stuff to be engaging so i try my best to put effort into doing voices and stuff like that one thing that i want to get better at is fake laughing because my normal laugh is already weird and so trying to fake laugh just comes out really really awkwardly you've probably already noticed it if you've watched some of my stuff and a character laughed and I oh you car is dead sorry will you oh Yukari got a critical hit. And she immediately missed. Okay. I was like, oh, she actually hit that, and she got a critical, but no. Immediately, my luck ran out. Alright, is Pixie going to level up? Yeah, level 3, okay. So, since this is the first Persona game I'm playing on the channel, one thing that's probably going to be asked by at least someone is, what other games, what other Persona games are you going to be playing on the channel? And my answer to that is... Hopefully most of them. I feel like I'm definitely going to play the modern trilogy on the channel, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal. I don't know if I'm going to do the original trilogy. I'm going to put a solid maybe on those. And then spin-offs, I 
we'll probably maybe do. I'm also going to put a maybe on those, but a bit more of a likely maybe. Because those aren't really... Because spin-offs like the Arena Games or Strikers are straight-up sequels to uh, the original games. And so it's like I'm... It's like we're really getting more story out of it instead of just like a weird wacky side adventure like the uh, Q games or the 3 and 5 dancing spin-offs. Uh, Persona 4 dancing is actually a bit more it has a bit it has more of a plot than 3 and the 3 and 5 dancing spin-offs, which is funny that that's the one that I'm thinking about the most because that notoriously is really hard to get nowadays because it was released on the Vita and then the only way it's available now is by buying the Persona 3 and 5 bundle on PS4 and through that you will then get Persona 4 Dancing is also which is really weird I do have a lot of games planned this year I have a few more visual novels that I want to play on the channel uh, especially this year. Like, I want to play another Ace Attorney game this year. It's going to be much later in the year because we just finished Ace Attorney 2. But yeah, I, I do want to play all of the Ace Attorney games on the channel. I don't know about the Layton spinoff because if, I want, if I'm going to do that, I want to play through the Layton games on the channel. And I haven't played through the Professor Layton games at all. So maybe if I get around to that, then we'll do the Layton spinoff. And then I do want to do some shorter LPs because I have just been kind of doing really long ones. Like, this LP is definitely going to be my longest one in the history of the channel. And we just got through Ace Attorney Justice for All and Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, which were also, which also broke records for my longest Let's Play on the channel. So maybe I'll uh, cut it up, I'll... Uh, take breaks between those LP, those longer LPs with, uh, with these much shorter ones. I've been thinking about how I'm going to be doing this LP in terms of uploading, because, like I've mentioned before, like I just mentioned, this game is super long. And so I was thinking about how maybe every full moon in-game I can switch over and do a shorter LP for a little bit, and then after I complete that, I'll switch back over to this game. Because, going at the pace we're going now, this is episode 8. Let's say it takes 12 episodes to get through a full moon. I think there are like 10 full moons in this game, so that's like 120 episodes. Let's round down to 100 to be generous. And if we do that, 100 episodes is still like... Almost four months. Ah, oh, Junpei, sorry. But yeah, over three months, assuming that I upload consistently every day. And we know that I'm probably not going to be able to do that because of my track record of sometimes taking, like, month-long breaks. So, this could end up taking, like, five months to complete. But we'll see how it goes. This LP might go faster than, I, than I'm expecting. It may go slower. Whatever happens, happens. One thing that I've thought about quite fre frequently is redoing LPs. Like, for example, I redid my Portal 1 LP. I think that both of those Let's Plays are kind of outdated. But if I had to recommend one, I do think that the most recent one is the better one. So I've been thinking about how long should I wait between making an LP and remaking it with more updated stuff because I don't want to do it too soon because if I just do it like two years later that f that feels like it's much too close so I've made a policy that I will not be able to do an LP unless I've completed all of the other games in that series and I might make some excepti exceptions to that rule if it's a bit too unreasonable or if I really, really want to do an L uh, a remake of an LP. So for example, I think my Ace Attorney 1 Let's Play is a bit outdated. I might even say super outdated. But I don't want to redo it right away because we only just did Ace Attorney 2. So I'm going to wait until I have completed all of the other games in the Ace Attorney series. And then I'll finally 
be able to remake that Ace Attorney 1 Let's Play. By then, definitely enough time will have passed. And I've also wanted to redo my 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors Let's Play because looking back, maybe it's just because it's my favorite game and so I'm a lot more critical of my work on that. But there is a lot of stuff that I think I could do better there. So I'm going to do Zero Escape 2 and Zero Escape 3 before I go back and do that one. Which means, yes, I am definitely going to be doing a uh, Zero Time Dilemma Let's Play. Even though I mentioned that I'm not the biggest fan of the game, there is still stuff to like. And I do want to complete the series, so look out for that sometime in the next couple of years. While we're going through here, um, one thing that I do kind of want to talk about uh, and poke fun at, and I know a million people have made fun of this before, uh, it's manga with extremely long names. And the reason that I bring this up is because I was doing research on uh, some of the Persona spin-off manga, like I was looking into the Persona 4 Arena manga, and it kind of led me down this rabbit hole where I went to this website that lists a bunch of different manga names, and here are some of the ones that I found that were my favorites. Okay, my favorites were... and what, some of these aren't particularly long, they're just weird. Um, I want to eat you, I want to eat you eight. Uh, the story of an invincible merchant's rise to power in another world, he has the skills to freely order modern products so he can easily win in another world for. And finally, what does it mean that the retrograde destination is inside your ex-fiancé? Even though the engagement was called off, we decided to live together inside our bodies wanton. Okay, I'm sure that some of those are weird because it was Google Translate that was doing that, and so some of it was done weirdly. But how do you get that out of Google Translate if the original thing wasn't already kind of weird in the first place, you know what I mean? Can't wait until we get some more uh, characters, because just from wandering around in Tartarus like this, I've already gotten so many repeat lines that it's kind of driving me nuts. Level up, level up. Level up. Yes, okay. We're doing good with SP, so I don't need to worry about that. And then let me do this before I forget. I'm gonna go register Pixie again, because since it got a new move, it's technically slightly different. Oh, Twilight Fragment. We got one. I'm not sure why. But cool. Alrighty, without further ado... Let's go right into this boss fight. Make sure you have a persona with uh, electricity, because none of your other party members have electric attacks. All right. It's enemy territory up ahead. Are you sure? Are you ready for battle? Let's go. All right. Ready? Let's go. The enemy's attacks are growing stronger. If you're being overwhelmed by the enemy's assault, protect yourselves by guarding. If you're guarding, then even if your weakness is struck, you can avoid being knocked down. Try and make use of that in battle. Okay, guarding. This is pretty prevalent because I'm pretty sure Junpei is weak to electricity. I'll check when it's his turn. So yeah, if you don't have someone who is doing something during a boss fight, it might be a good idea to uh, have them guard. Or, oh, it used wind. Okay, I think Junpei is, also, is weak to wind then. Because the reason they give that tutorial is because I'm pretty sure someone is weak to wind on the team. Sweet. It's confused. So... Can I have Yukari do that? This might be a dumb idea, but I'm gonna try to see if Junpei can get a crit. 
Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Nice hit from Iori. Now's the time. Then Takeba can heal herself up. We're all pretty much at full health. I sh Oh wait, no. Junpei's Yeah, Junpei's turn is next, so I'm going to have him guard. Cuz I think yeah, you get up. Now I want you using Garu on Junpei and having it be bad for us. You know what, I'll just have Takaba attack here. Didn't get a crit. Junpei guards as usual. Taru Kaja, what does that do? Attack up, okay. That won't have too much of an effect here. One thing about me that I know is bad about how I play these games is that there's this like common thing where a lot of people when they were kids, holy crap, what the hell is that? Maybe this will hopefully kill them? There we go. Okay. Right, sorry, the won. sorry, Yukari. We're not getting you any XP this time. But hey, Yuki and Junpei got up to level ten. Da, 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 da. Junpei is up. He said the line. Yay! That's one of Junpei's like most iconic lines. <laughs> and another one bites the dust. We're on a roll, guys. While we're at it, how about we spice things up every now and then, like by changing up the leader. What? I was worried about what you'd say next. Don't you want to see how I'd run this whole shebang? Well, don't you? I'm fine with whatever. Honestly. Wait, we wouldn't be it wouldn't be wise for a change in command in the middle of an expedition. We're making steady progress under Yuki's lead, so let's continue as we have been. Fine, sure, I guess. But I'm pretty sure I could take down the enemies here all by myself. Chill out, Junpei. If you're not careful, it won't be long until you get hurt. Takiba's right. We can expect another strong enemy to appear. Don't let your guard down as we proceed. Okay, whatever. Guess there's always next time. So quiet. I can hear our footsteps echo. Hey, you hear another pair of footsteps? Side! <laughs> Okay, we'll use up two fragments here, and then that was the last boss of this, uh, oh. Hey, sick armor! I think it br helped bring out my inner charm, you know? So, we could give this to anyone. Equip on self, Yukari, or Junpei. So we're not gonna do that right now. Instead, we're going to check- okay, so... We're curl- Yuki's at 24, Takeba's at 25, and Junpei's at 22, so we will give this to him. Just because that helps raise his stuff the most. Although, maybe we should give it to Takeba, because she keeps getting absolutely destroyed in these battles. You know what, Junpei? You go back to normal, Takeba gets the shirt. And we get a cool new sword. It's replaced with new equipment. I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be too bad, right? Yep, it's perfect on everything. It's just an upgrade from the short sword. Huh. Well, well. The shadows on this floor are much weaker than you. This may be a good opportunity to try the rush command. Rushing can be gratefully useful when you're trying to move through a floor without spending much time in battle. When you use the rush, all party members will default their basic weapons and attack in rapid succession. So yeah, we've already been using this in a couple of battles. Let's not pass it up. One thing that I haven't really mentioned, let me just 
heal up Takuba real quick. Is that they sort of give you, like, not really tasks, but more like goals to aim for uh, up in the top right corner. They give you goals to more so entice you to explore other parts of the of Tartarus. Using up our last Twilight Fragment here. It's okay because we won't need to use Twilight Fragments again for like another month after this. So it was stuff like that in the top corner that was like... Uh, open up a treasure chest or something like that. Or they just try to give you a reason to go around and explore because... Fulfilling quests and stuff like that is always a satisfying part of playing games like this. So as uh, we talked about previously, all, pretty much all of the voice actors got swapped out for new guys. The only one that didn't change is Tara Platt as Elizabeth, the Velvet Room attendant. And I'm not entirely sure why, but if I had to make a guess... I'd say that Elizabeth is probably, probably the most iconic voice out of all of this. So I think that one, I think if Elizabeth's voice actor had changed, that one is probably the one that people would be most upset about. Because Tara Platt also voiced uh, Carijo in the original version of Persona 3. And she did great in that role as well. And fun fact, I'm pretty sure that the voice actor for Elizabeth and Mitsuru in the original Persona 3 and the voice actor for the protagonist in the original version of Persona 3, they're married in real life, I think. I think from here on out, I'll uh, try to avoid battles as best I can. Because what level is everyone at? Okay, Mo Makoto and uh, Junpei are at level 10, but Takaba is at level 8. So, I would like to get her up a little bit more, but I think it's fine because Yuki and Junpei are just at the perfect level. Th there don't appear to be any enemies on this floor. Wait, what's going on? Oh. Ah, these seem to be special floors. I'll need you to go up through them for the investigation. Hold on a moment. Alright, the path is safe ahead. Curious on what's the next floor. Please continue. Okay, as, as long as that's activated, I'm pretty sure we still get the... Uh, the ability to teleport. Like we take a We're making good progress. Yeah, so this is a completely like empty floor. All it has a teleporter is a teleporter, and it, on the next floor, what's this? This floor. There's no mistaking it. Do you recall, Yuki? I once told you Tartarus was separated into multiple areas by borders resembling rifts. I believe this is one of those flo border floors. I'm not sensing any enemies. Would you mind taking a look around? So yeah, there's no enemies in sight. We have a one-way teleporter over here. We also have a treasure chest that contains old document one. <clears throat> the power supply expansion has been completed. What's unusual is the excess wattage. Why would an island with only a school on it need so much power? Hmm. Let's see. It seems to be it seems to continue upwards, but the path is blocked. It looks like there's no way to progress any further right now, so let's stop here for tonight. We've still managed to cover a lot of ground. Well done, everyone. Um... Guess that's it, then. But how are we going to get past this roadblock? Hmm. Tartarus changes every day, right? So maybe it won't be blocked off tomorrow night or something. No. Unfortunately, that logic doesn't seem to apply here. Some floors have fixed structures and layouts. This appears to be one of them. Some other factor may have caused this. I'll look into it. <laughs> Guess we'll just... Guess we just gotta wait. Come on, let's bounce, Makoto. As you send Tartarus, you'll reach border floors. You have to wait for the right time for them to be open. In other words, you've gone as far as you can, so let's head back. You can continue grinding if you want more XP, money, and other stuff, but I think we've spent uh, quite a lot of time in Tartarus, so thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode... We're going to head back home and get into more of the social element of the game, which I'm super excited for. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!